Hello again, or more hello. So this is a local recording of a presentation that is going to be streamed live right now. So now I am live with other people on Twitch. And um, we are going to talk about and show all the tools that we've made to make the game and that we are publishing today uh, for general public availability. So uh, you are going to be able to uh, get the tools to modify the games and you are going to see just what we've been making and how we've been making the game and how you can to now try to uh, make more contents or modify actual contents. All right, so to access the tools, um, it is quite simple. So it's on Steam. So I'm going to change my screen and go into my Steam setup in just now. So this is my Steam setup. I have Scourge installed. It is said that it is a beta, but don't pay attention to it. So to access the tools, you will have to go right clicking on the game, go into properties, go into the beta tab. And here you are going to have to select editor. So right now, as I'm recording, it's not there yet, but don't worry, you will have to just select editor. And once you have selected editor, the game will will start downloading the editor by itself. And once the download has finished, to access the editor, you have to right click, properties, go on local files, and click on browse. And here you have your local files. This is where Skullbringer is installed. And you will notice there is something new, which is called Skullbringer Editor. So this is the game editor and the tools that we've been making. So just double click the boot it up. Uh, it can take a while. So here it started. And once it started, it's going to ask you a folder. And this folder is going to be the content folder. So if I go into my install folder, I see here there is a content folder. So this is, a, this is the folder you have to point the editor to because this is where the game content resides. And this is what the editor is looking into accessing and modifying. So just going to start again. If the editor pops and here we are and select the content folder, which is already pre-selected in my case and just click on select and the editor is starting. So I'm just going to grab it here. All right, so this is the game editor. The window is maybe a little bit too big, but this should do it. All right, so just saying hi to anyone dropping by now. Who's there? So Horizon Furnest, Horizon Furnest, hello there. Mazufilo, hi. MJadax, hi everyone, hi. So the editor is Steam only. Yes, the editor is going to be Steam only. Um, the editor has a lot of limitations. Uh, it is a Windows only. It is not capable to run on Linux. It is not capable to run on macOS. It only runs on 64 byte uh, bit um, systems and it may have requirements higher than the standard game and uh, so don't be surprised if it doesn't work for you um, it is a tool that we made while we make the game so it is nothing like anything you've seen anywhere so this is a fully custom tool that we program ourselves and it is a tool that we made to make the game this is what we created to make the game actually and um, we never intended to publish it publicly and we are doing now because we thought that maybe it could help into uh, getting the, the game more awareness on the game and so on and also maybe many models might like about what what, what, we've do, what we've done with it and um, so just be aware that it is a development tool 
it is not meant to have the same support of the base game so uh, we are not planning to make the editor running on linux we are not planning to make the editor running on macOS, and we are not planning into expanding the editor so this is just what it is and what it is ever going to be so let's 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 start into it so uh, the editor is fully playable so if you have your gamepad you can just play around with it so it is playable just like the game is and the other there is absolutely everything about it so this is basically the game engine that is running into the game editor so in, in live and the different changes that you are going to make or may maybe make maps and so on so this is going to be reported live into uh, into the, the, ga the game editor I'm just going to check on questions did you do this editor at the start of the day of Squad Ringer? Yeah, pretty much very early into the development. Um, when we work on game, as soon as, as we are sure of where we are heading, as soon as we are like maybe past a little bit the prototype, we start right away making tools. And uh, as you're going to see, tools the tools that we make are very productive and this is all that matters to us. We want to be very productive and to be able to make new content very efficiently. And so the editor is divided into several categories. So there is the room editor. So the room editor is basically the room of all the game. So uh, here we have all the rooms that are possible to spawn um, in the first world. Uh, here we have the other world. We even have the hub world. And warning, spoiler, in five, three, two, five, here, spoiler, uh, it is the alternate uh, hub. And uh, so this is how we edit stuff. We have the second world, we have the spawn, we have the third world, the tutorial level, so which is a level in itself. And uh, there is even an NPC around, but you can disable NPC. And the fourth world and you can test everything so if i click on test the game is going to start right away so this is the fourth boss and oops sorry uh, how do i stop the music stop 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 yeah sorry <laughs> it must have been really really loud uh, i am going to uh to just check on no not that I'm going to change the volume mixer and the editor I'm going to put it down right so that it doesn't destroy your ear and um, so everything is built into the game so you can directly play it with it so if I yeah if I go on a bus and start a bus the game is going to play directly so the bus is here with the music with everything and uh, you can just play around and uh, test out things and that's pretty much so that's pretty much what's going to be there and um, so the room editor is pretty it's maybe the most straightforward part of of all these tools so basically it's a tile based editor so if you already went through other type of game making stuff or maybe even uh, RPG maker or maybe tiled or tile editor or whatever you are most likely familiar with what is a tile set and how tiling work so uh, here on the right we have what we call a tile set so these are basically the basic blocks and uh, sorry if you can hear my cat can you hear my cat because I have right now a, a cat that is basically rampaging through my flat. <laughs> yes, sorry. <laughs> so she's going to calm down in something like maybe five minutes, I believe. It usually it's it's something like five minutes. <laughs> we can hear the cat. I almost thought it was in the game. I <laughs> know, sorry. <laughs> she's going to calm down. It's just that like it's it's right the time of the day way when she she does on a one page and um so on the right 
we have the tile set so these are the basic basic building blocks of a level so you can click on them to select them and once you have selected them you can just click on the room and they are going to be placed there so you can cl right click to remove them and if you wish to select multiple blocks like this you can and you can also just put them around so you have a ton of different sprites you have also animated sprites but we are going to see that later and um, you have different pages so here we have at page zero and you can go on page one page two page three page four page five and so on and just grab stuff so for instance these are animated sprites so you can just select them and if you wish you can put them here and these one are normally already plugged into being animated so if you jump on them they are going to react instantly so this is something that is defined outside the editor i am going to uh, to explain to you later but for now let's just focus on this so uh tiling you just select what you wish to put somewhere and you just click and you can also remove what's already there and replace it and now comes the collider part because i right now i have just placed my tiles on it but they don't have any colliders which means that my game character can go through them and nothing happen and to check what's currently happening with the colliders we have a shortcut on the keyboard so just hold the space bar so if you hold the space bar this happens so here the game is going to highlight the colliders and it's going to go into the collider mode and in collider mode it's basically just the same except that you don't have to care about what's on the right you don't have to care about the tile set and what you are going to do is just basically painting colliders so i just left click and this is a collider so if i removed it if i put the collider here let's say that i am going to put here a few colliders and i'm going to uh, release space and right now here i have an invisible wall because this is basically just the collider i've just placed here and so what we want to do is removing those so if i want a bigger pencil i just have to uh, select more tiles here but it is not really the tiles that we are selecting into the tile set when we are in tile mode it just like enhances the selection but it doesn't quite select actually the tiles and we just remove this we add here some tile here here and maybe here and we move this and here we are so here we are now our blocks and our block is now fully working with colliders so this is basically the basic stuff about making platforms and so on so now the other part which is funnier is making stuff that you can go through so um, there is another kind of collider so right now you can see that there are red collider but here we have colliders of another color so just don't pay attention to the purple for now what we are going to use now are yellow colliders so yellow colliders are just like one tile um, thick and what they are these are platforms that you can walk on but that you can also go down from and also just pass through when when you jump and so these are basically what we want to be this platform so we are just going to double click just to go here for collider and here we can now go through this platform and just stand on it while going through so these are what the yellow collider are for and now we have 
two other colliders, which are which we used exclusively or mostly for the fourth world. This one, the ac the actual one, the, this one that we have on the screen. So uh, as you can see, there are purple, and there are different kind of purple. So there is dark purple, and there is light purple. So basically, they are the same as the red and the yellow. So dark purple is the same as red, and light purple is the same as yellow. So here I have colliders that I can go through, but on the right I have colliders that I can move around with. And the difference with the red and, and yellow is that bullets can go through them. So uh, for instance, I can shoot through this, but I can shoot through this. So these were basically the particularities of the blocks that we've made for World 6. And you could, for instance, go there and just fire and uh, they were going through. So this is what basically how you tile and how you make rooms. Um, now, how you place doors. So as you can see, there are three doors here right now. And what the, edit, what the game is going to do is that it's going to maybe sometime remove doors. So it's going to place rooms a bit randomly and procedurally. I'm going to show, show you that a bit later. And, um, and you can place doors. So here we have three kind of doors, but if I want, I can just, for instance, remove these doors. So which means that the boss room will never spawn with a door on the, on the bottom. But I want this door to stay. So uh, to place a door, you have to use the middle button of your mouse. And you have to use on your keyboard the key I, J, K, L. So these are I is for placing the top door. J is for placing the left door. K is for placing the bottom door. And L is for placing the right door. So you have to press and hold one of these key and use the middle button of your mouse to just say where you want to place one of these doors. And doors are going to be optional. And you can also remove the doors. So here I have here just unchecked show doors. And what it's going to do is that it's going to uh, just show you how the room would look if the doors were removed. Um, yeah, I'm going to catch up with questions. I'm um, going to check that. Uh, purple look like collider that only bullet can go through. That's it. That's exactly what they are. Um, can you use Realm 6 blocks in Realm 1 and vice versa? Uh, no, you can't. Um, the different realms are kind of hardcoded, so you can't, for instance, have um, use them directly from what they are. But, 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 I am going to show you in a moment how to define these building these building blocks more precisely because these ones are animated and it's, uh, it's not just like grabbing them from a texture and putting them on the scene. They have like there is a file that describes what they are and you can eventually copy on, from this file how the different kind of traps behave and put them into other worlds so you can like invent your own traps and maybe try to copy how the blocks from world 6 are working into rim 1 for instance you can do that. You can try to duplicate them and to put them there. But it's not going to be as simple as trying to find them into a tile set and pasting them into a room. You have to create them first. And this is the not trivial things that is going on with this whole editor stuff. And um, what you can do here still on the editor. So this is a 
one of the rooms that leads to the bus but the room the bus door uh, why ah, okay here it is so here is the bus door and uh, the thing is with the room that is qualified as bus door is that it is dynamic which means that the bus door can be anywhere and the reason for that is that actually due to the procedural generation we have to take into account that the bus can be mostly anywhere and we need to be able to connect it from anywhere and what we do about this is that when we design a bus door room we designed it in a way that it is perfectly symmetrical and that the bus door can fit on any corner so that's one of the tricks uh, to change what a room might be here you have the type of room so here you have type and you can just change here and make it a normal room it's a spawn it's a minibus it's a bus it's a pre-bus this is a bus door it's a shop it's an upgrade an upgrade is all that is the altars and stuff uh hub is a special type that is only used for the tree for the up tree uh challenge are the chests that you can open and get fights uh, secrets are secrets rooms and the sink sink is the special room from world one here it is the sink so this is a, a room that is absolutely unique to world one this is a special room that is used to bring back greed after you fight it um two questions all types of colliders are available in other levels yes they are you can use uh purple colliders and red and yellow into any other so uh here i am in level one and uh, if I want to, uh, let's say, put purple colliders here, I just can. So uh, there is nothing preventing me from doing so. And the only thing that are bound to world is that uh, in game, the world 2 will always have snow. So uh, right now in the editor, there is no snow but if you boot up the game you will notice there is there are some snow particles in the background so this is something very unique to world 2 so even if you completely modify world 2 there will always be snow particles but you can trick the game you can for instance make the snow particle invisible so uh, even if it triggers snow particles the invisible particles are not going to be seen um, the other trick is that world five so the aspect of the warping aspect of world five the fact that you go through walls and it mirrors and so on the so kind of portal stuff in world five um this is hard coded into the game which means that world five will always be the world with these warping portals and so you can't have you can't warp warp from other levels so for instance if i go on world 4 and let's say here i going i'm going to remove these colliders i'm going to remove them and if i go through there what's currently happening is that the game character went through the screen and is now falling forever it's not warping around because warping is something that is hard coded into world 5. Um, if you happen to have lost your game character you can press p on your keyboard and the character is going to reappear, reappear just on your mouse pointer so you can drag her around and just place her just wherever you like um, what can i say more about this so if you go into the different kind of room so the spawn is where you start a level uh, if i click on npc i can see exactly where is going to be placed uh, our little peppy um, I, I can also click on stuff like debug backgrounds so debug backgrounds is something that we use just to check if we didn't miss any tiles on the background because there are, there are stuff that can happen like this so sometime when you are like 
designing a room and so on, sometimes you miss tiles. And the thing is that these kind of holes are going to be seen whenever the game character is going to get hit because the background is going to blink. So uh, you are going to see these holes. So uh, double backgrounds, always double check if you uh, have like holes in your design. And if you have, just paint them over. I, I don't know where is, well, I can find where is the tile that is missing, but well. And you can also debug computers. So here, if I click on debug computers, so it's going to place one of those computers which bring out logs and so on. And uh, this is the same thing as um, the other kind of stuff, the, the stealth. And so basically what's going to happen is that every time you uncheck and check, the game is going to try to place the computer randomly. And this is exactly what the game does when it generates the game. So it plays the computer on, in a random room in a random place. So this is just this is just a safe check to check where the different elements can just spawn and pop and uh, just to check whatever fits. And um, what can I say more about making rooms? Um, so there are the boss room, there is the altar, which are the upgrade. So these are where you get your blessings. And uh, so uh, it's kind of automatic because if I go onto, no, it's not. But so you have to put the colliders for all the altars and so on. And if I unselect the altar, it disappears, but the colliders are still there. So it's something that you have to put manually. And the shop, uh, the shop can be of multiple type so uh, it can be a normal shop it can be a weapon shop or it can, it can be a cursed shop so uh, here i have the normal shop and where i use where are my other shop okay they are not there but uh, i guess it's dynamically done in the game um and i can and i can of course test rooms so uh for instance, this room, this is a shop, There's nothing's going to happen, but if in this room I can click on test and it is a room that is putting enemies and so on and I can just test the game. Uh, but before we go with the enemies, I'm going to first show you about what I've told you about uh, modifying tiles and uh, trying to uh, program new tiles and so on. So for that we are going to go into the game files going into content and if you go into content you are going to see that there are different kind of files so there are first the x and b file x and b file are actually the texture for the game um, the textures are encoded into an x and b, x and b format uh, you are going to find doing to fire try to find tools if you want to modify them because we don't provide uh, the tools for modifying them and uh, if you want to play around with the texture you are going to have to find uh, special software that are able to read x and b and, and compress um, but what's interesting for us just now is that in the tile set folder we have a bunch of XNB files, which are basically our tile set on the left, the graphical part of it. And if you go into other kind of files, there are JSON files. And JSON files are basically files that you can open with any text editor. And this is how most stuff in the game are defined. So uh, for instance, here we have a special tile that is named grass and it's the start tile at 512 so basically if you go from the page zero all tiles are numbered if you select a tile on the lower left you are going to see selected tile equals zero if i click here selected tiles equal 164 so uh, if you see here start tile 
512. So basically, it means that 512 on world one, it's going to be somewhere here. So here we are. Here is I 512. So in the first uh, first tile of our grass tile. And our grass tile is an object of one by one, so it's just one by one tiles. It doesn't have any frame time because it's not animated when it's still. And it has a lot of bunch of properties. Override tiles, it means that when you place this tile, oh, sorry. When I grab this tile and just place it here, it's going to replace the tile that has already been there and it doesn't have any HP because we add we used to add stuff uh, like uh, destructible elements so we there, you can actually put destructible walls into the game we actually coded them they exist into the game but we never used them because we didn't find any relevant use of, of them but they exist into the game code so if you want to put like blocks that you can like shoot at and destroy you can um destroy colliders it means that when this tile get destroyed it also removes the colliders that are beneath it and destroy particle is a particle that you can fire when it destroys i'm going to show you how the particles are defined later and it can have multiple configurations. So uh, the normal configuration, it means that it is animated. So we have a frame count of eight. So it means that the frame one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So all, the, all of these are part of an animation. And this animation is going to play whenever the player or an object touches it. So we have to touch true means that whenever the game character is going to touch my little grass over here my little grass is, over, is going to animate over this eight frame and what this last property do loop on touch it means that whenever you touch it it's going to uh, just loop once and stop and the reason for that is especially visible on the fourth world because whenever you touch this grass they grow up and go back and for that to work we have to tell the game that you have to cycle through the, anima the animation once and not more so uh, whatever you touch them and if you touch them just a little bit or just just once there is a full cycle of the animation going on so this is a kind of stuff there is a lot of other properties and this is also where you can define traps so i'm going to check if i can find the world one spikes so for instance here you have, you have spikes so when you go on them you have spikes that and traps so here is a trap so it's the same thing it has a start tile it has uh, a width and a haze. It has a haze of two because it is basically two tiles. So uh, I'm going to check if I can find them so around. So here they are. So there are two tiles. Two tiles tall. So this is basically our traps. And it has sounds. So you can define sounds. There is a charge sound, which is basically the sound that that warns you that the trap is getting active. There is an attack sound, which is a sound when it pops out, and the cooldown sound when it has finished and it just go back down. And it has a normal config. It is an animation over 17 frames, and it reacts to touch. And this one is actually a loop on touch because we want the full animation of the trap to be playing only once and fully. And it has a damage start and a damage end, which means that this trap 
he is dealing damage from frame 11 to frame 16 over its 17 an frame animation. So this is basically how traps are kind of defined. So you, you just define what happens when you touch them and whenever they are going to get you damages. And for instance, if I go into the file from tileset7, which is world 6, and if you want to check what are the traps from world 6, here are easier are red block. And the red block, they are animated over 10 frames. And they loop, they loop on touch. They have damage from 0 to 12, which basically means that they are making damage over the full uh, extent of the animation. And they have a special property which is, which is flippable trap, which means that whenever they are getting hit, they are going to flip into a state of being deactivated. This, this was a special trick that we had for World 6. So basically what happens here is that if you grab this and paste it into tileset1 JSON and make it match to a, a tile that exists into this tileset, or maybe edit the XNB file to have the trap from World 6 copied into the XNB of tileset1, you are going to be able to have just the same trap, the same kind of tile and trap into uh, world one. So you can do that, but you, add to, you have to edit these JSON files. Now next, um, enemies. So enemies, it's basically here. So here you have like a little devil. So if I click on this little devil, the, the editor switch into the enemy mode. So here we have our different enemies which are already placed and they are divided in what we call waves. So uh, we have different kind of waves and all these waves are here on the top. So you have like different kind of icons and if I click on them, you can see that the enemy changes and these are all the different waves that are built into this room. And how to place enemy is as simple as selecting them here and placing them on the game. And if I click on test, our little squishy friends are just here. And if I click on reset, they are going to disappear. And if I go back into editing mode, they are already still there. So I can remove there. Um, just checking on question, where where we can find the name of all the available sounds in string value. Uh, nowhere. <laughs> That's one of the issues that we have is that the, the sound bank that we have for the game is encrypt because th this is how goes our contract with our sound designer and it is for to protect his work. That's something quite normal. And um, so I can't open all the sound. So that's an issue. And that's a limitation that we have with the, uh, the modding aspect of what you can do and what you can't. And, uh, but what I can do and I, what I am willing to do is tell you the names. So I can, for instance, give you all the names. I can give you like the full list of all the sounds that are into the game. So you can pick whichever you want into your own design. The only limitation that is, is that as it is, you can like add your own, your own sounds. So that's something that's one of the limitations. So for now you can, you can do that, but you can just grab any of the sounds that are already existing into the game. And uh, I am going to provide you with that. I'm going to give you what are the different names and string and what you can use. For instance, um, I don't know if in world one, but in other world, you have like a, a property like sound, attack sound and so on. And I'm going to, to give you all the data as that is. And yes, point again, bull, uh, it's okay, but for the string value, it's more complex. Yeah, for the string value, it's for sure, for sure. And uh, for everything that is string value, I am going to uh, try to make a list. And uh, if yeah, if I don't, just button and just harass me on the Discord and until I just post the full list. And um, 
So you can place any kind of enemy. Uh, there are the alpha enemies. There are also the mini bosses that are here. So if I want, uh, just can put uh, a mini boss just here. Just just place a realistic one. And uh, if I click on test, my mini boss is here. Even though this room is not a mini boss room, I can do that. So the, the game tolerates this. You, you can absolutely do that. And and I can also place bosses. So if I want, I can just place a boss over here. But it works. But the game, I, I would expect, will not quite like this. So uh, you have to try to uh, use the dedicated boss room for that. Because if you don't, the game is not going to like initialize the boss health bar. And uh, if there are no health bar for the boss, the room are, is likely never going to be cleared out. And so this is how you place enemies. And what I wanted to explain to you are all the different waves. So as you can see on the top, there are waves of different color. There are blue, red and green. These are the difficulty and these are how the game works with difficulty. So we have three normal enemy waves, we have three difficult and we have three slots for easy waves. And what the game is doing is that the game uses a dynamic system for working with difficulty, which means that the game kind of track um, your performances. And if you are doing well, it's going to try to throw more difficult waves at you. So it's going to automatically pick some of the red waves in a random order and if you are doing normally it's going to grab more normal waves and if you are struggling the game it's going to try to get easy waves so that's basically how it works uh, and uh, we also have these waves which are like purple waves these are used for the mini bosses so for instance here we have like a mini bosses and as you can see we have purple waves and purple waves are backup waves there are special waves that only spawn under special circumstances and these special circumstances are defined directly into enemies so for instance um, here i have my minibus and inside the behavior of this minibus there is something defined which is reinforcement and I'm going to show you that and uh, it's going to be into another JSON file so if you want to make actual enemies making enemies is basically done by modifying this file the enemy catalog.json uh, no, not in Visual Studio I want to open it not bad so these are how the enemies are done. So uh, my large enemy is my mini boss. So this, the ancestral stone rune, it is a code name. It's not the actual name of the enemy. It's this enemy. So this is my mini boss. It is defined with multiple properties. It has a family. So either it is a construct or a creature and uh, it has a sprite size. So there are only three different sprite size for enemies. 64 by 64, uh, 48 by 48, and 32 by 32. This is the only size you can do with enemies. And if it has a size of 64, it is mandatory for it to be a mini boss. It has a texture ID, which is nine, which means that the actual graphics of this enemy are in my common nine.xnb. So this is where you grab all your frames. Um, it has a bestiary order. This is for the in-game bestiary. It means that on which panel of the bestiary does it appear. Uh, it has a weapon and we are going to check uh, later on where how to define weapon. So it has the weapon number 12. It has particles and uh, particles are also work with IDs. I'm going to just after that, I'm going to explain you how particles work. 
uh, it has a charging time. So charging time is basically the time during which the enemy blinks uh, just before it attacks. So uh, if I show you into the maybe the spawn room and if I place this enemy here and click on test, you are going to see the enemy it prepares the attack, it opens, there is the exclamation mark and it fires. This is the charging time. And this is the time it takes to fully like open and fire. It is important for this time to be readable. If you put a time that is really short, the attack can be like guessed and uh, it's going to be really, really difficult. So this is basically one of the most important uh, value to tweak if you want to tweak difficulty for instance. Uh, minibus behavior is something really specific to uh, minibuses. So minibuses have something special which are that they have pre-built AIs. So you can't like change AIs and you have only a set of pre-built stuff. And for instance our first minibus which is here it has a pre-built behavior of corner and center and this is the behavior of having the enemy to spawn and in the middle or sometime in the center and it tries to alternate and so on so this is basically one of the pre-built um, behavior if you want to check all the behaviors that are you just have to go through all other enemies. So for instance, this is the minibus of the second world. It has a different minibus behavior, which is free moving and center, which means that the enemy tries to appear in the center and otherwise it's going to try to be free moving. And it has a second weapon because minibuses have the special feature of having two weapons, two different weapons which basically means that they all have a maximum or at least two attacks and the attacks are built in into their weapons. Uh, is smashable and alt is smashable means do these enemy are smashable, which means that can I, can I counter them with a smash while, while they are charging? So for instance, here we have our first minibus and if it does any of its attack, if it appears on the corner, which is one of the attack, or if it appears in the middle, is, he is smashable. You can like smash and, um, and counter it because there is the exclamation mark appearing above it. And if I were to put force here, there is going to be one of the attack that is not going to be counterable and if I remove both of them both of his attack is going to be like not counterable so uh, this is how you can play around and just make some of his attack to be dangerous and not counterable or maybe making all of them counterable so this is the first mini boss of the game so we made basically all of his attack counterable and a question for Professor Geek, I haven't been able to tune into most of this due to work meeting, no worries. And will this be hosted somewhere to watch later? Yes, absolutely. I am currently making a local recording, so you are going to be able to uh, watch this later on, no worries. Um, if we change all the JSON file, we need to reload the editor. Yes, if you touch any of the JSON file, you have to uh, close and reload the editor. Otherwise, the game will not uh, take into account all any of these changes. And chance to use alt weapon. So this is basically uh, the chance that a minibus has to switch between his different attacks. So he has two attacks. And here we have a chance of 0 0.5, which means that each time it attacks, it has a 50% chance that this next attack is going to be the other one. So this is how it switches. So uh, if you want to have an enemy that use often the same attack and sometimes the other one, you are going to like lower this, this chance, like maybe 
at 0 0.25 or something like this. Uh, this enemy has HP, so the first mini boss has 100 HP. Uh, it has an AI move type of teleporting, which means that the way it moves is through teleportation. And it has an attack type which is firing randomly, which basically means that whenever he sees the player, he tries at some random moments to uh, fire at it. It doesn't follow, it doesn't try to follow the player. And chance to idle while following the like it's another kind of stuff. It's for an enemy that tries to follow the player. We've put something that is called chance to idle while following, which is something that makes the enemy to pause to give some some space to the player because making an enemy that constantly follows the player is something that is quite annoying. So we try to avoid it. Uh, min distance and max distance is basically the distance that the enemy is trying to keep between the player. So uh, if you put a mix and max distance that is very short, it's basically an enemy that is going to try to get as close as possible to the player. And at the opposite, if you put a maximum distance that is very large or maybe a min, min distance, it's going to have an enemy that is trying to uh, go away from the player. So uh, you can play with this range of accepted values and this is make the enemy go away or follow the player or maybe just try to wander around without even trying to uh, maybe get close to the player. Move speed is how fast it, um, it moves when it is in action, when it tries to reach the player. Uh, floating speed is the speed that when the enemy is kind of inactive. So for instance, if I put this enemy here and just click on test so here this is the, the moving speed and this is the floating speed so right now this enemy isn't chasing me so it is kind of floating around so this is the difference between moving and floating and there is also a firing speed factor firing speed factor means that here it is zero and it means that whenever the enemy shoots um, the enemy stands still but if you want you can make enemies that kind of keep moving around even though they are firing and you can use this speed factor uh, which is a factor to their move speed so uh, you can use that time before activation is the time um, before which the enemy does nothing when you enter a new room so for instance if you have one it means that if I enter into a new room and this admin is here, the enemy is going to do nothing for one second. And this is to give the time to the player to actually read what's going on. Because if you just put zero, it means that the enemy can just fire on the player just when it gets through the door. And um, we add this parameter just to give you some time and space for you to read what's actually going on into the room before the action actually starts. Min move time is and max move time is a time in between the movements of the, um, the enemy. For instance, if there is a min max uh, of one second, it means that the enemy every second is going to reassess where it has to go or where it has to, what it has to do. Does it have to, we, is it going to wait? Or is it going to chase after the player or is it going to float around? So this is the time in between. And min max attack is just the same but for attacks. So for instance, if you have 0 0.67, uh, 75, sorry. And um, what's going to happen is that the enemy is going to fire every 750 milliseconds. So that's basically how it goes. Uh, is grounded is used for enemies which are stuck on the ground for instance the crabs so uh, if you place them on the ground and just have is grounded equals true it means that the enemy is not going to be able to uh, unstick from the walls and so on uh, smash time is what happens when you smash the enemy so uh, it's, it's basically the parameters that are going to um, affect how the enemy is going to bounce around and how the enemy is going to uh, resist or not to the smash of the player. 
So uh, for instance, if you have smash time of 0.8, it means that for 0.8 seconds, the smash is going to go through. So uh, you're going to bounce around for 0.8. Smash speed is the force of the smash. So if you put this very high, the enemy is going to fly very, very, very hard. Uh, the smash easing is something that defines it's the smoothing of the trajectory. It's not quite something that it is worth playing around. So better left it to uh, what they are. It's it's mostly an option that we should have removed. And smash rebound factor is basically how does this enemy rebound on on walls? For instance, the first mini boss has a rebound factor of 0.3 which means that every time it bounces off something his speed is multiplied by 0 0.3 which means that every time it hits something it's going to go slower and slower and for instance there are some enemies like the jellies the jellies uh, this one is going to die in one hit so maybe the red one but this jelly has a rebound factor that is really high which means that it rebounds a lot. So this is what the rebound factor are. And if I remove and replace it with maybe a devil, a devil has a rebound factor that is much smaller. And so it doesn't rebound very well. And this is how you can have fun with enemies because you can, for instance, making a ball and something that is going to rebound a lot and it's very fun because you can like pinball it into multiple other enemies um and question in question in the chat so uh, just taking a moment uh, what is the behavior of the enemy cornering the colliders same as kira mm, i'm not sure what you're talking about cornering the colliders uh, if you if you can like elaborate, I'm going to try to uh, answer. Concerning, of what is the behavior of the enemies concerning the colliders? Ah, okay. How does the enemy work with colliders? Uh, yes, they work exactly the same as Kira. So uh, if you have, uh, let's say, yellow or or uh, red colliders enemies can see through them so uh, they can't assume that kira is behind a wall so what they are going to do they are going to try to go around the wall and for instance if i like maybe take a devil place it here what's going to happen is that it's going to go around and now that he sees the game character is going to try and shoot it and if i move around the enemy he stops and try to get me into his vi visible range but if if i change these colliders to purple and this one to lighter purple so these are the colliders that where the bullets can go through and what we did with this is that enemies can also see through them. So if now I test, I know it goes around. So I guess it's a property. It's a property on the enemy maybe that I, we have, you have to set. And uh, maybe check around. There must be a property like see-through walls. I'm pretty sure it exists. Mm, it will be hard to translate the if I set firing speed factor value negative is the enemy will have a recoil while shooting mm, if you set a negative I guess I don't think that is going to have any kind of impact no, at, at least not in the way of recoil but you can actually define a recoil directly into the weapon of the enemy and uh, I'm going to show you that when I walk, when I will go to the weapon editor, and uh, you can do fun stuff with um, recoils. And uh, you'd be surprised that we used very 
special tricks and uh, like for instance this bat so uh, this little bat it has only one attack which is it dash it dash on you and the peculiar thing about this attack about this dash is that it's actually using a fake bullet so this enemy has a range weapon it has a fake bullet and it fires a fake bullet and it is the the recoil a negative recoil on this fake bullet that actually makes the bat to dash this is a kind of trick that we use to uh, make these enemies oh coucou coucoloscopy j'espère que tu vas bien and um, so what can we say more so fury is uh, how much of the um, the oh, sorry the energy from the drone is recharged so internally in code we call that fury so uh, not to be mistaken with the fury special attack and money is the actual amount of blood that you get all the sounds are the sounds of what happens charge sound attack sound is basically charge is when the enemy starts to uh, try to attacking attack is when the attack fires alt charge sound is for its other attack and alt charge attack it's it's the other other attack uh, appear sound is when it teleports and just appears disappears it when it teleports away get it it's when it gets it death it when it dies and explosions is for the mini bosses it's when it shakes and explodes uh, charging particle is mostly used for some enemies to be more obvious like the lasers and the lasers when they charge they have these like particles that comes that comes to them like uh, the beam is like charging and so on and this is what charging particle is for lock on aim time is um, something that is also used for the lasers because the laser has something peculiar which are that they tell they are going to tell you where they are going to shoot with their red laser and if you take a look the laser is like perfectly following me but at some point it stops it follows and then it stops and the reason for that is that if their aiming was absolutely perfect as they were impossible to avoid and we don't want an enemy to be impossible to avoid and this is what lock aim on charge time so uh, if you put for instance 0 0.1 it means that the enemy will give you 0 0.1 second to escape this attack so uh, you can use this for all enemies but it is mostly visible on lasers because they instantly hit and oops i closed the, the file the enemy file because where were we and warning distance is the distance from where the exclamation mark is visible but it's a property that we didn't never use and we've put a very huge value just so that the exclamation mark is visible from anywhere so uh, this is something that we actually didn't use uh, stun delay is for how much time it's going to be stunned if it if you are going to uh, land a perfect hit a perfect smash if you smash it like perfectly they are going to be for instance this enemy is going to be stunned for 1.5 seconds uh, bullet resistance is a factor which tells how much an enemy is resistant to bullet so for instance if you have like 0 0.5 it means that each bullet that touches the enemy has a 50% chance of being reflected and dealing no damage. And for instance, there are some enemies which are very resistant. So the crab bot 
they have a slight chance of repelling and you likely have seen it right now and if i fire at them this one went through and this one too but if i just try again this one went and this one went too and this one went through okay <laughs> but if i try with a way more resistant enemy and which would be for instance this crab the fat crab the big crab this one actually has a much bigger bullet resistance which may might even be 100 percent so this is how you play around with this with, pro with this property uh, reinforcement is what i wanted to tell you about uh, mini bosses uh, there is a fight going on. Ah, oh, no, there is a trap. And so this one has waves on in purple. So uh, these are the reinforcement. So for instance, it has a property which, which is alert damage threshold, which means that if the enemy takes more than 40% of damage in a specific amount of time which i believe might be a few seconds a couple of seconds maybe i can't remember but if this threshold is exceeded the enemy is going to spawn reinforcement so he's going to spawn either of the wave between zero and two so uh z sorry uh this is the wave zero this is wave one this is wave two so uh, what's going to happen is that if I am a good player, if I am a good player and manage to remove 40% of the else of the enemy very quickly, oh, this happens. So it calls for reinforcement. So this is something that we used to balance the game out, to avoid having players to uh, get too bored from from early from early mini bosses once you get around the game so we added some kind of kind of randomness into uh, seeing that they are doing well uh, the warning position is where on the sprite does the exclamation mark displays the stun position is where the the stun stars the stars that turn around the end uh, end of the enemy where they are stun is uh, the rotation center is where in the sprite the rotation center is it's something that is not quite used actually and move collider the move collider is where the enemy collider is so here in the enemy there is like a red uh, uh, sorry a green collider this green collider is is actual hit collider so these are every bullet or or slashes that is going to touch this green box is going to hit the enemy this is a hit box and no sorry it is move box if i go here and la here you have two modes you have enemy colliders you have hit and move so each enemy has two colliders it has a move and a hit collider so the hit collider is what makes it takes it and the move collider is what makes it not go through all so uh, for instance this enemy is not going to uh, for instance go more than just this on it, it can go through a wall it, it, it's going to stop here and um, the it is usually a bit wider than the actual sprite of the enemy and the reason is that when you are in game and when you are into the action you usually have like a wider collision box because otherwise it's way too precise or maybe it gives you the impression that the it doesn't connect and so on so that usually you have a bigger uh it box and the animations are actually the different sprites so these are where the sprites are how many frames there are into each animation so for instance the charging charging is when the enemies start attacking like the devil it kind of opens 
This is a charging attack. It has a firing attack. It has a stopping fire, which is when the enemies closes and have stopped attacking. It has a charge blink blinking. So, for instance, when an enemy is about to attack, it plays his charging animation. But if his fire time or his, his, his charging time is bigger, so if you have on in the beginning, where is the charging time? Here is the charging time. If the charging time is longer than the actual length of the charging animation, what's going to happen is that the enemy is going to switch to a charge blinking animation during which the enemy is going to blink for the remaining duration of the charge. And this is to accommodate the fact that we want to be able to uh, change dynamically the length of the charge or to be able to manipulate it without having to reanimate the enemy fully. Uh, smashed attack is when enemies are smashed, so uh, there are mostly one or two frames. It's when the enemies have the big eyes popping out and just like being surprised. Appearing and disappearing is only for teleporting enemies and uh, it's basically, yeah, all enemies are quite built upon this framework. So if you want to make a new enemy, you go on the bottom of the list, you try to copy an existing enemy which is close to uh, one you already want to make and you put it here and you restart the editor and what's going to happen is that it's going to appear at the end of the list. So for instance, maybe here. So uh, here you have like an invisible enemy. It's an invisible enemy that we actually never completed and uh, it is present in the JSON file of the game, but it's an incomplete enemy. It doesn't, doesn't quite exist. And that's basically all I can say about um, the room editor and making enemies. So now we can move on to the next part, um, which is the maps, but the maps is quite simple. So this is basically how the game generates maps. And so you have the different maps from the world and what you can do and you can uh, change how levels are generated. So for instance, you can increase the chance to create one door. So when it creates a room, it then checks every door on this room and tries to create a connection and this connection you can define how much connection does it tries to do so for instance if i try to make only one door maybe two maybe three maybe four and i can just change the chance and try to uh in, in, in to impact this um can we add our own sprites or do we have to change the behavior of an enemy for our uh, you can add your own sprite. To add your own sprite, you are going to have to uh, edit the XNB files. And we don't provide the tools to edit the XNB files, so uh, you are going to have to uh, search over the internet to edit your XNB files. And uh, once you've done that, you can add sprites and you can define into the JSON file where the game has to find your different sprites and you can do whatever you want with them. And to change the behavior, you can only pick a uh, behavior that already exists. So uh, I am going to give you also a list of the different behaviors that exist. But basically, you only have like the minibus behaviors and the move behavior and the attack behavior. And there are only like maybe a handful of them. You, can, you can't like invent and a new, well new behavior. You have to play around with the existing behavior, but you can sometimes distort them. And uh, for instance, we managed to make a whole set of different enemies out of maybe two to three different behaviors, tops. And uh, so that's one of the, of the limitation. Um, if anyone wants help adding enemies, I have done that. Squibbledoo! Oh, it's you, Squibbledoo! I haven't recognized you. <laughs> Feel free to reach out. Yeah, so the community has already went through trying to uh, get a hand on the editor. So um, if you have questions, you can pop on the Discord. There is a modding channel 
and uh, I am trying to uh, read through it and trying to answer questions and if you have any questions feel free to ping me and uh, if anyone can reply to you they will likely uh, do it gladly, gladly and so you can also on the map editor change uh, exploring from other room so these are all parameters that you can change and you can like play them around and just check uh, how it behaves. So for instance, if you you can have some very, very long levels, very corridory levels or very blobby levels, it really all depends on what you want to do. And uh, when you are set, when you are quite confident about your world design, what you have to do is click on override. If you don't click on override, nothing will happen in game. So you have to first click on override and it's going to replace all this value which the ones that you selected. Um, it is absolutely no use to tweak the map size property. The map size property is only here as a test. It is written here, test. And same goes for the number of minibuses. Uh, these two sliders are not going to have any impact on what the game is going to do these are only sliders for testing and for visual testing of what's going on the screen right now so uh, there is no way to uh, change these values so these values are all coded into game um, the second the third panel in the editor is the bullet editor so the bullet editor is something that goes it, it, it is the twin panel of the weapons editor so basically weapons fires bullets but weapons is something that defines what is the general behavior of the weapon and bullets is what is the behavior of a single unique bullet and so you have to first design the bullets themselves and for that you have a whole kind of properties so for instance this is a very basic bullet this is the bullets that are used by the basic enemy by the devils and so on and you have different kind of properties so time to live is basically the time that the bullet takes to die by itself so for instance if i have 0 0.1 this means that the bullet after 0 0.1 second the bullet just die off so uh, if i put 0 0.5 the bullet takes like 500 milliseconds before dying so this is how we manage like the, the, what we call the time to leave of a bullet and for instance this one was on four uh, bullet sprite is which sprite does the bullet use so uh, if i change this it uses a different sprite um, this list comes from a json file this json file is the bullet catalog.json if you edit it you are going to have the list with some more properties um, no this one boss catalog no it was bullet catalog sorry so it has the name basic enemy bullet zero so this is basically what is here basic enemy bullet zero and it has different properties so it has the texture which means that this bullet is findable into the common zero xmb uh, smashable defines if this bullet can be smashed so for instance this one is smashable which, me which means that I can actually smash the bullet and you can see that my game character doesn't repel bullet it only destroys them and if you that's because the game character doesn't have the skill that he that enables her to make the repelling the bullet if you want to ch check out different skills you can go here into debug skills and you have different skills that you can set so these are what are into the tree of the game so if i just click on smash bullet now it is selected and if i go smash you can actually now smash the bullets 
Ah uh, yeah, the spider bullet, <laughs> the green one. They are really, really pesky. Um, wall contact particle is the little particle that fires when the bullet explodes on a wall. So if you, you look on the bottom, there is some. I'm going to uh, reduce the frequency of the heat, and just so you can see. So there is a little impact. This little impact is a particle. And what this tells is that wall contact particle is the particle number 4. All the particles of the game are defined in another JSON file, which is particle catalog. And uh, it is the number 4, so you have to go into particle catalog.json and check the number 4. So this is dash particle 0, particle 1, particle 2, particle 3, bullet contact, and it is particle 4. So this properties is what defines our little impact over here. So it is defined on the command 10. It is an animation that is played. Uh, it has five frames of 32 by 32. These are the coordinates in the textures when it, where it begins. Uh, speed is the speed of the particle, so it's a particle that doesn't move. So uh, it has a speed of zero. It has a rotation center of 16 by 16. Um, rotation auto means that it automatically rotates depending on the ori orientation. For instance, if I change the direction of my test bed, you can see that the particle kind of rotated. It rotated from the direction of its parent bullet. This is what rotation auto does. If you put something else than auto, um, don't know if there is other thing, but I guess it is known. Ignore. So if you put ignore, the particle is not going to rotate. It's going to keep its neutral position. But if you put auto, the particle is going to grab the orientation from its parent. Um, auto TTL, this is the auto time to leave. When the auto time to leave is set to true, it means that the particle dies automatically when its animation is finished. Otherwise, it's going to stay for um, for an unlimited amount of, amount of time. And this is used for other purposes, but uh, mostly like lasers. The warning, that like the particle of lasers when they are charging, they have an auto TTL set to false because the actual time to leave of the particle is managed directly in code. It is the code itself that tells the particle when to die. So there is no need for an auto TTL. And so the bullets are defined into the bullet catalog file. And so you define different kind of particles. You have, you can define a particle uniquely to when it hit a wall. You can define the particle uniquely when it hit an enemy. And for instance, we use this for like uh, maybe doing blood splashes. Like when a bullet hits a wall, there is no blood, but when it hits an enemy, there is like a blood splash. Um, there is also a different kind of particle when it dies in the air without eating anything. And contact particle speed is the speed that the particle has when it hits. So uh, for instance, this one is zero which means that when the particle hits, the particle just stay in place. But if there was uh, some speed, maybe, I don't know, 32 or something like this, it would mean that the particle would like keep going for maybe a certain speed uh, compared to uh, where the heat happened. So uh, you can, for instance, making some maybe smoke that tries to continue a little bit when uh, when you eat something uh, trail particle is used for instance for rockets uh, or maybe from for for grenades uh, i'm going to check if i can find uh, no rocket over here rocket rocket 
Where can I find the basic rocket? So as you can see, the rocket kind of have a trail of particle, and this is what trail particle is. So you define a particle, which is uh, here you have like a, a smoke particle that co that go out goes out from yellow and goes to red and then goes to smoke. So this is a particle, and it is a trail. Uh, so it's defined here, and you have the trail particle time, which means that every 0 0.3 second over the, the course of the bullet, it's going to generate a particle of this one. And the trail particle density basically tells you how many of these particles are generated each 0 0.3 second. Um, muzzle flash is another particle and muzzle flash is basically the sorry I'm going to try to make something more gentle so muzzle flash is the particle that is shot when a bullet is emitted so if you look at the start of this bullet there is some a little splash 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 this is the muzzle flash this is the animation that like it's like it's the tip of the gun and it's just like the, the, the little flame that goes out when a bullet uh, comes off. Uh, wall contact sound and all the different sound is whenever a bullet hits something, rotation center is the rotation center. Frame time is because some bullets can be animated. For instance, oh, sorry. For instance, this bullet is animated. It, it blinks, it kind of blinks. and. Uh, this is basically the frame time. So here you define where the sprite is. So for instance, this is an animation. The shotgun shell only have one frame, but some has more frame and they are animated and the frame time basically define what is the speed of this animation. So that's basically for the bullet. Uh, once you have defined the bullet, you can here choose which kind of bullet is which one and uh well i have break everything i broke stuff but let's just take this one um bullets can have a lot of different properties so they can have a behavior behavior are basically are they a laser or are they doing stuff like rebounds so for instance if i set rebounds in one so it means that my bullets are going to rebound once so they rebound once and they die. If I set two rebounds, they are going to rebound two times and then die. So this is what rebounds are. Rebound spread is what is the spread of the rebound. For now, the rebound spread is zero. So it means that whenever the bullet hits something, it, the angle reflects at a perfectly reflected angle. But if I set, for instance, um, in degrees, maybe a rebound of 98 degrees, it means that bullets are more fuzzy. So whenever it is a rebound, they kind of like have a range of rebound. This is used to uh, break the monotony and the regularity of weapon. It, has, it adds more organic feel to them to have like a little spread. And rebound restitution is how much of the speed does uh, the bullet keeps when it bounces off. So for instance, here is one, which means that it keeps 100% of its speed when it rebounds. But if I have 0 0.5, it means that the speed is typically half by 2, but it doesn't work. Well, something that doesn't work surprising <laughs> um, laser are something very very special so for instance this is a laser laser can be of two types then can be instant which means that they fire and then poof disappears or they can be sustainable sustainable is basically a laser that just keep being there and uh, the problem is that lasers for being mm, sustainable, they must have a time to live of zero. If they don't have a time to live of zero, 
it's going to bug out and uh, it even without its bug, it's bug, it's bugging because just check uh, what are the other lasers so this is a continuous laser it is sustainable this one is an instant laser uh, instant and lasers have a time to live too and the time to live on laser basically defines the time that the laser disappears so uh, it fires and then it fades away so basically the time to live is how much time does it take to fade away so if I put 0 0.1 it's way more fast it's very speedy and if I even further reduce it is very very fast and on the other end if I increase it a lot so it takes a lot of time to fade away so uh, this is fun to use when you have something like very big lasers if you have uh, maybe a, a super fat ass lasers maybe I have somewhere big laser so this is a big laser and the big laser are 0 0.25 seconds to die off so this is fun to use when you have something really big um, clustering clustering is something funny uh, I'm going to remove the rebound out of this one uh, zero uh, clustering is what happens when a bullet explodes and to make it explode into other bullets so for instance if I want uh, this bullet to explode into 10 other bullets so what happens here is that it explodes here and it and it generates another bullet but it fires 10 different bullets but I want it to have a spread uh, here we go I want that between each of the generated bullets there is an angle and so you can like create fireworks <laughs> basically uh, is it possible you can move your camera footage it will soon be in the way of the bullet property. Oh yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm going to try to keep um, the properties over here so uh, so that you can see. But uh, I can, of course, uh, change the way my camera, where my camera is. Um, maybe I can put my camera over here. It should be way better. Um, Okay, and so angle shift and spread. Angle shift is basically how much uh, shift you want to apply to the, the spread of the cluster. Uh, preserve rotation is basically to tell uh, what rotation takes, uh, what, what it takes from the, from the rotation, which means that when it explodes, does it take the rotation of its parents or does it have, does it have its own uh, unique rotation? So. Uh, this is one of the tough uh, auto time is something that you can define uh, if you want for instance a single bullet to advance to move around and to generate clusters by itself but without dying so for instance you can define a bullet that traverses the screen and that generates different kind of cluster along its way without uh, exploding um, avoid on smash. Avoid on smash is something that is used, for instance, if you smash a bullet that was to explode into a cluster. If I click on avoid on smash, it means that if I smash this bullet back and it touch something, it's not going to generate a cluster. But if I leave it unchecked, what's going to happen is that the cluster is going to explode at the face of enemies and we have this property because some bullets were way too powerful if you smash them at the enemies uh, collider radius is what is the collider of bullets so you can see what the colliders are by clicking here on colliders so the red stuff is the collider of the bullet so for instance if i put 10 it's a very big collider which 
directly here it is so and you can move around the bu debug bullet stuff so if i hold space and right and left click i can move around where does the debug stuff uh, fires from and you can change the direction here and you can change the frequency of how much bullet does it fire so you can change that and of course it is fully playable so you can play around with it um, spotting enemy enemy spotting is very fun because this is how we spawn enemy from for instance um, this so we can spawn enemy directly from bullets and uh, we used it to uh, for instance for the uh, the jellyfish and what you only have to do is specifying which enemy does it spawn so for instance i can i could be <laughs> for instance be able to spawn a king crack bot. boom and my A's are crashed <laughs> so <laughs> this is what happens so uh, if you play around very uh, strongly and uh, try out things that might uh, for instance <laughs> make the editor crash <laughs> But it would have been funny to just check uh, what happens. Okay, placing this here. Uh, is there any way to pause the bullets from firing in the editor? No. Uh, only thing you can do is basically put the frequency to the maximum and just clear, click on clear preview. If you have like a lot of bullets, you can click on clear preview when it removes all of them so uh, if it's going if it's hardly manageable just click on clear preview but you can't just pause stuff um, what's left on properties um, so enemies enemy count which means uh, how many enemies does a single bullet uh, spawn uh, maximum enemies it's a pool of how many of of how, how many enemies can you spawn by using this particular kind of bullets which means that for instance here we have five which means that at uh, any given time they, they can't be more than five enemies spawned from this kind of bullet this was to avoid the screen to be like fully cluttered into uh, an infinite number of enemies spawning um spawn if smashed so this is do we want something like if there is an egg of jellyfish coming around if you smash it what happens does the enemy still still spawn when it eats or do we want the egg to explode and just create a day so this is what this property is from for explosion is for big explosion so for instance i'm going to try to find a rocket where are, where is my rocket mini rocket so this is a rocket and as you can see it has like an explosion and explosion is defined by its range so here it is 30 pixels but if i put 60 boom the explosion is automatically bigger and the game automatically generates more smoke particles and so on uh, flames explosion flames are the little flames that stays on walls uh, they does nothing they are the other only purpose is for decoration and for fun and explosion ripple bullet what is this oh yeah ah i remember so this is a special stuff this is something that we actually removed from the game if you played early version of the game uh, you might remember a special gun which was repelling other bullets around you like it was like a, a swoosh and uh, it, it repelled bullets this is what explosion repel bullets is for so uh, if i check this what's going to happen is that i can it can be seen better but what would be happening is that when the explosion happen, every other bullets that are caught into this explosion are going to be repelled. 
Um, this was this weapon, the shockwave, but it was not used anymore. Um, damage is the number of is the amount of damage per bullet. Uh, damage from smash is the is the damage that a bullet does once it is smashed. Um, contact recoil is the recoil that is transferred to the enemy. So, for instance, if it leaves, yes, Doctor Central Potato, how are you doing? It's been a while. Um, the contact recoil is um, whenever a bullet hits an enemy how much of energy is it transferred to the enemy so uh, how the enemy is going to fly away on the impact and the recoil time is the amount of time the recoil um, its, dura its duration uh, can it stun uh, so this means that if this bullet hits an enemy while it is vulnerable with this exclamation mark is it going to stun uh, the stun force i can't remember what it is force ratio of the stun compared to smash i can't remember what this one is sorry uh, clean when womb cleared um, so this is basically does the bullet uh, stay whenever you have killed all the enemy on the screen so this was used to uh, clean automatically after a fight and you usually want this to be but if you are someone really sadistic and want to make the bullet to stay even after a fight is over uh, <laughs> you might want to uncheck this one um, I'm doing well. Been neck deep in making music for the last few months. Oh, who? I like the guys. <laughs> um, support mods. So uh, this is used for the different kind of weapon mods. So uh, the unsettling mods, the uh, all the kind of stuff that you can plug into a weapon. Uh, does this very specific bullet? Is it impact by mods or not? And this was just because uh, some bullets have some tricks, and uh, we didn't want it to mod to apply. So, but just check what are the weapons that are already defined. Uh, movements are very basic stuff. So, velocity is the speed. Velocity randomness is how much of the speed might be random so if i put 40 it means that the speed might be between 150 and 190 so it's it's a range uh, acceleration is what is the acceleration of a bullet if i put uh, maybe more 20 no uh 200 yeah you can see that the bullet is like accelerating and you can, if you want, put a negative acceleration, which means that the bullet like, kind of slow down and maybe eventually go back. And um, we add the property to make them explode automatically. I can't remember which one it is. Ah, it was if you put time to leave zero, I guess. Yeah. So this is a special trick. This is one of the special hard-coded trick. Um, if you put a negative acceleration on a bullet, what's going to happen is that it's going to go backward at some point. But what we did is that if you put a time to live of zero, a zero time to live means that the bullet never dies. But there are special conditions like if there is a negative acceleration if the bullet show like fully stop at some point while having a time to live of zero it's going to die off automatically this was used for instance for the shotgun bullet because we wanted the shotgun player heavy shotgun so as you can see the shotgun bullet is very speedy at first but it has a very heavy deceleration and it has a time to live of zero 
because we wanted that when it reached zero, we wanted it to die off. So this is one of the special tricks that we have. Um, slow enemy bullet. Uh, I'm going to remove the deceleration. Zero, please. Um, angular velocity is basically what is the speed, the angular velocity. So you can like making some very curvy weapons. So you can do stuff like this, for instance. And I maybe I can like increase firing speed just so you can see a little more of it. And I'm going to put a time to leave of three seconds. One, two, three. Okay. And I can have an angular acceleration, which makes it like accelerating more into its curvature. Um, I can have a random angular sign make the angular rotation speed. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like kind of rediscovering some of the stuff that we made. <laughs> mm, to have a random sign. Oh yeah, oh yeah. This was like making bullets randomly going left or right. If you add like an angular velocity. And angular switch time is used to make the bullet to switch angle between positive and negatives over time. So for instance, if I put 0 0.25, I can have bullets that change angles every 250 milliseconds between my angular velocities. And this can be used to make like bullets wiggle. The scale is the scale of a bullet, so I can change the scale directly. So uh, you can have a scale acceleration. So for instance, I can have w bullets that have start big and have like a negative deceleration of s the scale. Uh, rotation and physics based is basically used for mostly grenades and for the bomb minibus in the fifth world. Uh, when he explodes, uh, yes, that's basically, uh, I can't remember, but I guess it's a big cluster. It's a cluster weapon. Uh, maybe I can show you where it is. Um, it is the Gigabomb 3. This one. Uh, please, frequency. So what this weapon does is that it's a giant cluster. It's a very big cluster and this one is a bit special because it doesn't have quite a zero time to leave. I guess this one has been crafted very carefully and it kind of reverts, even the direction reverts. And I can't remember exactly how did we did this. But anyway, um, what I can show is the physics based. Physics based is basically just what it means. It makes the bullet act like a, a physical object, actually, like rebounding, but with the physics and restitutions and uh, more like how you would throw a ball. And for that, I need to put some rebounds. Maybe five. And physics friction is the restitution of the. And I guess that velocity acceleration maybe was the gravity. I can't remember what is what. But I'm going to check the grenades because the grenades add everything to explain it. Basic. The pizza gun. Pizza gun has, is physics based. This one is physics based. And so the pizza gun, so it rebounds and it follows the curves and so on. It works kind of like a ball. And it's exactly like that. So what we add is that you have a velocity 
some randomness and I believe that the acceleration is the actual gravity of of the stuff it's something like this and once you have designed all of this uh, we have what we call actions actions is maybe the most complex stuff about this bullet system because it allows you to reprogram a bullet on the fly and for instance i'm going to check a big round bullet okay so this is a bullet and what i can do is apply to it a set of actions so for instance i can add an action and i want this action to trigger at 500 milliseconds after it got fired and what i can do is that I can change and replace absolutely all of its values. So for instance, I can at 0 0.5 second, I can completely change this bullet. And for instance, maybe transform it into a basic revolver bullet. And just click on OK. And here, here you go. So it transformed into something else. And this seems to be pretty basic, but you can do some very crazy stuff with this. You can change the angular velocity and you can do some very strange stuff and I believe that some of the attack of maybe not this one, maybe this one for instance. It was a bullet that kind of dies and generates another bullet. Or this one was tricky, it's a bullet that follows you. But This one, no, instant lasers, grenade bombman, refracting lasers, no, we need blood bullet, dark matter, a lot of stuff, tentacle, so for instance, this was a cluster, I guess it was the minibus of World 5. World 5 big demon bullet. Maybe this one. So this one, as you can see, it kind of changed direction and I believe it has actions. Here we go. So it have actions. It have three actions and you can, some, for instance, define an action at 0, 03, 0, 06 and uh, one, once it reached the third action, it goes back to the first action. And the action that this was having is that it mostly change the velocity and the angular velocity. So basically what we could do is that at each step of times we could like change the angular velocity and what it does it was like having bullets who uh, kind of swirl. But you can do, your, your wildest dream can come true with this kind of stuff. So uh, you really can like code a full Dan Maku uh, with this kind of system. So uh, it's really, really versatile and we didn't use the full extent of this, this system into the game. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> if I pronounce the word Dan Maku, uh, I believe it will likely trigger a lot of people uh, on our Discord and like, well, let's make a total game. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure that you can. You can really make some really, really crazy stuff with it. So uh, you can really make those, those, those very peculiar bullets that uh, advance, move around, and uh, like kind of stop, blink, go somewhere else, and uh, maybe some crazy, crazy stuff. So uh, and explodes into other bullets and explodes into some more. So you can really do some uh, very, very fancy stuff. Um, the weapons, uh, so, the, so the bullets are the basic building blocks and the weapons are how these building blocks are going to be used. So for instance, a shotgun. So the shotgun, basically, it use... Um, where is the bullet? Oh, okay, this way somewhere. So, what you do when you define a weapon is you define a cooldown so uh, for instance the, the shotgun doesn't have any cooldown but let's just check 
Mm, what kind of weapon can I, can I check? Yeah, the devil has a cooldown, but its fire isn't burst. Master level there. No. But. So this shotgun, for instance, it has um, multiple interesting properties. So, first, the magazine capacity is basically the number of bullets that you're going to have in game. Uh, the number of bullets per bar is how much, how many bullets uh, do you reload for each completed bar of the drone energy. Uh, fury to reload is how much energy it is required to uh, refill a full bar. Uh, transfer money. Um, it is I can't remember. It's about I can't remember. It is determine if the money held by an enemy should be transferred to the bullet. Hmm, can't really remember what this is. The sound is uh, most obviously the sound. Uh, limit cluster sound. Well, this was just a trick to be used to avoid like having every bullet triggering like the same sound at the same time so uh, it's, it's very specific mm, rotation speed it's for weapon which might rotate so for instance if you take the um, alpha crab it has a weapon who like kind of sweeps around so it's a rotating weapon and you can have a rotating weapon that follows a scene, which means that it's going to uh, rotate like this. And the symmetry is basically how does the weapon is going to rotate compared to the position of the enemy, of the player, for instance. And this is what is used for the crab, for the alpha crab. It has a symmetry, which means that if the player is here, um, here, and it's going to sweep from ear to ear, but if the player is inverted, it's going to sweep from ear to ear, so it goes backward. So uh, this is what the symmetry is for. But what here is the most important is that here on the screen, you have like a series of of dots, and I can't remember how do you place dots. Okay. It's with the left button. And how do you remove them? Okay. But what you can do is place dot on the screen. And what are the dots? And as they are bound to the weapon itself. These dots are what we call uh, cannons. It's from where a bullet can be fired from and to check what are the bullets that are fired you go into these short sequences so if you go into sequences for instance here I have one sequence which is one shot which is fired at 0 0.57 second and it fires here in bullet and origins and this is where we have all our bullets so it fires 14 bullets and they are all firing out from different origins id which are our cannons so for instance the first bullet goes out from the id one the third bullet goes out from three etc etc and why so because this is used for instance i'm going to take a more simple weapon so this weapon for instance it has only one cannon the cannon zero which is downward but if i put another cannon which is like going to the right so i have cannon zero a cannon one but if i go into my sequences i have one shot and this shot only fires one bullet from cannon zero. But if I want, for instance, to add another bullet and make it fire from cannon one, so what's going to happen is that 
it fires actually two bullets. You, you can see much here, but I'm going to choose only the election. Oh, there's the image of the Earth. So what's happening here? So you can see there is actually two bullets fired from each of the two origins and they are both firing in the direction of the weapon but you can do other kind of stuff you can tell what is the direction of the bullets compared to the origin so unidirectional tells that the bullet goes straight into where the aiming is if you put omnidirectional the direction of the bullet is going to be computed compared to the origin so you can maybe see there is a red dot the red dot is the origin of the weapon and both of the blue dots are the cannons and basically the bullet is going to follow the line between the origin and the cannon so i have a cannon on the right i have a cannon on the bottom which means that I am going to have like a bullet that is going to be fired on to the right and another bullet that is going to be fired to the bottom because I have told my sequences to fire one bullet from the zero and one bullet from the one. So that's basically how it works. It maybe sound complicated and it's maybe something a bit touchy to grasp, but it's a really convenient way to uh, craft complex weapons with different kind of cannons and like firing maybe in, mo in a lot of directions or maybe in patterns or maybe all on enemies or maybe making a wall with all the bullets that are coming down and uh, you can do very fancy stuff with that and this is where you define also the recoil like how much recoil is applied to the enemy and you can put a negative recoil and you can for instance, use this to uh, like creating a dash weapon, a fake dash weapon. This is what we've done for the bat. So if you go check uh, act the actual weapon that we made for the bat, I'm not sure where it is exactly, but the mini bat, here it is. So here you see there is only a little puff, but there is no actual bullet visible on the screen. And this is because we use this only to uh, like put a recoil on the weapon and use this to uh, actually make the the, the, the the bat to dash and it was really funny to make it was really like hacking our own system to make something different like for instance it has first a recoil that is positive which means that the bat if you look at her movement, she does something like that. She first tries to uh, go back, like she, like she prepares to charge, and then she and then she she throws herself on you. And this is divided here, so we have like a first fake shot with a positive recoil, so she's going to go back, and then we have another shot, which then propels her forward with a negative recoil and then the last uh, shot which basically uh, was used to uh, tell this is where the shot ends but the bullets which are used here does actually zero damage they don't hit the player that's not what actually make damage to the player but in the JSON file defining the bat we have a special property which says this enemy inflicts damage on contact when it fires which means that it is the sprite itself that deals damage but not the bullet itself the bullets were only used to uh, create a movement and that was very very tricky and yeah and this is actually something that Florian did and this is something really cool about how we work with Florian because I usually create all these tools and design all these systems and I give them to Florian and Florian managed to like 
unleash its creativity and kind of try to uh, see what are the special tricks he can come up to get, uh, come up with just by trying to fiddle with the stuff and sometimes it tells me hey what happens if i put a negative recoil on something and i'm like thinking about it and i'm mm, it's probably going to break and it tries and it's something different happens and that's just how it gets his ideas on trying to uh, figure out things all right um so that's it for the weapons that's how all the weapons are working uh, it's really complex it can be really touchy to get your hands on uh, just try for yourself try to fiddle with the values there is some most likely the editor is going to crash a lot if you try to fiddle with the values without quite knowing what they are but once you kind of figured what they are it's going to uh, to be more uh, more navigable let's say so uh, what you can do also in this editor is pop enemies so you can like pop enemies and oh i modified this bullet i completely forgot you can pop enemies to test your weapon yourself and what you can do also is click on equip to player and you can equip any weapon to the player and just try them out for yourself and this was used mainly mainly to uh, test out player weapon but sometimes you can also try out enemy weapon but enemy weapon kind of act differently so uh, it's really different um, inside the content I guess I have shown you every file there is one file which is here but I'm going to show you this last and the big big stuff that is the boss editor so in the boss editor you can do a lot of stuff it's it's a really 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 powerful stuff in, uh, tool um so here are all the bosses of the game and it basically use a timeline editor so it's a, if you already used a tool such as flash it's basically the same thing or maybe other kind of timeline based stuff uh, what you do is that here you can select all of his animations or attacks and for instance here is the idle animation and you can press space and it's going to play the animation by itself i'm just going to catch up on question uh sorry it was probably already said but how can i create a new weapon i have to edit the correct json and open the editor to my to see my weapon ready to be configured so to create a weapon you just have to click on the plus button so if i click here on the plus button at the very bottom i have something new i have a new line which is called emitter and I can rename it like my new weapon and then you can like change the shots you can like for instance selecting another bullet uh, maybe this and changing the activation time and then you can play around with it so the basic stuff is adding clicking on plus same goes for the bullet if you want to add a new bullet and configure a new bullet just click on plus here go on the bottom and you're going to have a new bullet to play with and it's going to appear also here so here now if i go into my collections and go right on the end i have my new bullet that i just created so you can play with this the only thing that you are going to need to edit a json for is to edit the bullet sprite the bullet sprite and how the bullet explodes and what kind of particles it it uh, it changes it's basically here and it's going to be into the bullet catalog json but adding adding different bullets adding different weapon you can do that just by clicking on plus uh, just be aware that if you want to make weapons for the player you can't make new weapon 
you can only modify existing weapon which are marked with player for instance player heavy laser is a big laser player rapid laser is a rapid laser that the player can get or the pulse laser or here is the mini nuke so these are the weapon uh, that you can edit for the player but for the enemy you can do whatever you want for the enemy you can add like 10 weapons and uh, making 10 more enemies 10, 10 new enemies the only thing is that the player weapons are hard coded and you can only edit edit them you cannot make new ones that are coming to drop in the game this, this is one of the limitations of what you can do actually uh, the other thing that you can't do is making new blessings you can only uh, play around with the existing blessings and you can't make new skills uh, these are all out coded into the game unfortunately okay i see and uh, if i may happy with my bullet or weapon how can i save it or oh, is the way Alors, to, to save in the editor you just have to click on file and save and once you've done that you've modified your game file and everything is going to be saved so uh, what this does is that it takes your json file and it's going to transform them into another kind of file so into the raw enemy catalog so what happens is that when you start the editor it's going to read your json file to fill it with the basic stuff and it is going to read the raw file like the enemy catalog which is all the instances that we make within the editor itself <coughs> and when you click on save it's going to update the raw file not the json file the json file are going to keep the touch and the game doesn't even read them it's only for the editor <coughs> sorry I need to drink some more. Mm. All right. Mm, next step. Okay, bosses. Uh, to test bosses, you can just play it around and maybe like making a test room. So click on world one and selecting the actual boss room for world one. You can also have a grid if you want to, or no grid at all. You can hide colliders and curves, but I'm going to show you all what this is. So um, colliders are basically how the enemy is going to uh, inflict damage to you eventually, or where is his weak spot. So for instance, the blue circle is where can I hit the boss and the yellow are possible danger zone for me uh, while they are yellow they don't do damage to me uh, and I'm going to show you how in the timeline I can change that so the timeline has multiple modes it has an animation mode and if I click on W it switches to another mode so this is a weapon mode so uh, and it, Bosses have different weapons built in. I'm going to show you that later. It has different particles and colliders. So for instance, colliders, I'm going to show you the right punch. So the right punch, for instance, so the bosses kind of punch and it is his punch who does the damage. And as you can see, the collider like kind of switches from yellow to red. And this is done with the timeline too. So here I have my different colliders. I have his weak spots collider, but I have also his left arm collider and his right arm collider. So what I, what this tells is that on frame 10 to frame 25, I have my collider which is active, which means that in between this frame, my collider is getting red which means that it's going to inflict damage if i block it from here and if i have my game character and i jump on the hand it's going to inflict damage to the player 
And how do you define this range? It's basically by right clicking and making add action. So you have like three kinds of action. You can put an action that is a single shot, which means that it is only on this frame that this action is going to activate. Or you can do an add action, start shooting. Or maybe if I, and here, stop shooting, remove action, add, start shooting. So you have a start and an end. So which means our hand is going to be an attack from frame five to eight and also from frame 10 to 25. So this is how you define all the action within the boss editor. And so you can define the colliders, you can define the sound. So these are all the sounds that are bound to the body builder. And to play a sound, what you have to do is to select the sound, select which frame you'd like to play the sound on and just make it a single shot. So it's going to play this sound when it hits this frame. So for instance, if you play this, So you have the different sounds. So for instance, here you have the sound of colliding of the punch colliding. So it's right when the frame hits the wall, uh, etc. So you can define stuff like this. Um, the base stuff is the animations. So the animations, you have each boss comes with um, some kind of of a rig, of a skeletal animated stuff. So, uh, for instance, the body builder has a body. So uh, here I have a body for the body builder. If I click on body, I can move around the body itself. It has an head and it has two hands. And how this work is that here I have my animation white punch and I can like say, on frame one, the body is here. And on frame, let's say 10, my body is going to be here. And what happens is that the editor automatically makes the movement. So it automatically interpolates this and makes a movement for you. And and you can do whatever you want with this. If, if I want to make an intermediate value, I just go here, click here and make a new keyframe, which means that it's going to interpolate the movement from here to here. And I can, for instance, take the body and place it somewhere else like here. And so it's going to, from here, it's going to go here and from here it's going to go back down and it's going to interpolate just because I have added some keyframes and I'm going to animate like this. And you can do a lot of stuff. And for instance, the hand. <coughs> so here you have the hand who traverses the screen and you can see that it kind of um, slow down by the end. And when you click on right click on the translation of the end you can apply an easing and you can see that it has a back easing which means that this is these are all kind of different kind of movement smoothing so you can play around and check what are the different smoothing and you have actually here a tool if you are if you go in tool easing viewer you have this which appears this is just uh, something to help you know um, what are the different kind of easing. So if I just go check what is my back and out easing. So this is the actual movement or the speed that the actual punch is uses. So when the punch goes through the screen, it kind of follows this curve into uh, its speed. So this is how it works. And you can play around, you can just like try different kind of other easings. For instance, I can maybe 
use an elastic easing, which is pretty weird. And here you have like the punch who kind of shakes when uh, when it arrives at the end. This is what's called an elastic easing. And the other very very peculiar stuff is that um, no, don't grab the head. But I want the body. My body, I can't. I can make it move from one frame to another. But you see, maybe the line, the, the dotted line. The dotted line is actually what we called a Bezier curve, and a Bezier curve has endpoints, manipulated, manipulated endpoints, and I can like grab my endpoints and create some more elaborated paths. And if I do that, my movement is going to follow just, just this. So it's kind of weird and I kind of broke everything right now, but I, I believe that you kind of get the stuff. Um, another enemy that is quite complex is the Night Weaver, because the Night Weaver has articulations. It's kind of, I have joints. So uh, when you have like uh, here, a leg. So the, if you can see like all the legs kind of have movements. So this one is really complicated because you can grab, for instance, the left upper legs and you can use click with the right button and you can apply rotations. And so uh, you can define very complex rotational animation with these two. And all the bones kind of rotate uh, relatively to each other. So for instance, here I have the upper leg, but if I grab here, I have this part of the leg. And if I just deploy it and go back to the upper joints, it keeps the rotation. And so you can have some very complex transformation and continue so and do whatever whatever you want. So this one, I believe, I believe that this enemy was the most complex when it comes to animation. It only used like rotational animation. And so you can do a lot of, of stuff. And um, buses have a mandatory intro animation. The intro animation is the animation when the bus appears. So they all have this animation. This is the intro. And you have to specify it here in intro. They all have a stun animation which is the animation that they have when you stun them. And they have an outro animation. The outro animation in when they is when they, they die. So this is the animation that plays when it's over. Um, boss can have two phases. Uh, it's only used for one boss, this Criterion. Criterion has two phases and to switch to his second phases, it only add one in, in uh, an alternative intro animation so it's called the transition and once you've defined this the boss automatically has two phases and buses also have attack tables an attack table is basically what is the chance of each of his attacks uh, depending on its hp so for instance, Criterion, if it has 100% HP uh, down to 80%, is going to make all these attacks with 30% of this one, 20% of this one, 20% of this one. And you can also make patterns. For instance, if, if I have times 1 to 2, it means that Criterion has 30% chance of doing his center bottom attack 1 to 2 times in a row. That's what it means. And you can make different kind of attack tables. You can also apply different kind of HP threshold and so on. And, and then you have the transition 
between each attack. So when you have an attack, each attack is kind of linked uh, with each other by another animation, which usually is the idle animation, which means that when an enemy does an attack and it has to position itself to prepare another attack, it has to move from point A to point B and it has to have an animation when it transitions to point A to point A to point B and this is usually this animation so this is what we call the transition animation and it's usually the idle animation um, the transition positioning is um, where does the enemy goes to prepare his attack uh, same as animation it means that it goes exactly where you told you tell him to go as you design the animation right on the screen um, but you can also have different other kind of animation like left or right to player for instance if i go to bodybuilder and select my left punch animation it has a transition positioning left right to player which means that here you can see it is if i play my animation it is always on the middle of the, of the screen but once i test the, the the game and the animation okay this one is bugged it's not it's okay but if it goes there you can see it, it kind of try to track the player it, it, it tries to stay on the same horizontal level of the player this is what uh, transition positioning left right player does uh, you have other kind of al alignment like up down to player it means that it's going to try to uh, stay above the player and do an attack from there and zoning is something different i guess that um, maybe this enemy had a zone yeah so grid had a zone I guess oh yeah i hope so no i don't know but you have different zones so the zones are defined in the json file of each bosses and you can define zone on the screen like making a rectangle somewhere and whenever you put something like zoning the enemy is going to try to select one of the zones based on what you've told him to do. Like if it is the zone closest to the player or the farther away from the player or a random zone. And it tried to contain itself into this zone randomly. This is used for instance for maybe make more unpredictable or more elaborate patterns. And yeah, that's pretty pretty much it. I guess we almost seen everything. And what I can tell you more, um, the boss JSON file is quite complex. Um, it defines quite of the same property like the enemies, like the HP, the texture, the money, the uh, smash time, and so on. Uh, the bullet resist. Um, the wall colliders. Uh, here you have a bunch, a bunch of sounds. All the sounds that you've put here, is it are there are the sounds that you are going to see here in the sound mode when you press W. And all the different parts. So the parts are built like a skeleton, which means that there is a hierarchy. And for instance, you have a body sprites which can have sub sprites like for instance the hands are sub sprites of the body um, this is done so that if you move around the body the arms are going to move around with it otherwise if there are if there are no hierarchy it's going to be all independent stuff which means that whenever you are going to grab the body the hands are not going to follow with it so uh, it's more convenient to have like a hierarchy of stuff and uh, this is how it goes and each part can have weak spots each part can have a particle generator so i can attach a particle generator to a 
specific part and then play it with the here the particle uh, timeline so for instance here we have a head particle and head particle is basically what are the little red stuff coming out of the head of grid and and we can have weapon and each part can have different weapon and here you have the different weapon and it's the same as triggering uh, sounds or maybe working with the collider so for instance if i have the head weapon and i want the head weapon to fire here a single shot i just have to click here and single shot and if i play i just see that my single shot is fired during the animation and i can also put continuous fires so if i want this weapon to uh, be firing during the wall animation i just have to put a start and to put an end and it's going to fire constantly during this so that's basically how you make uh, attack patterns and just take a look at how all the different bosses and different weapons are made uh, just make sure that you press w to cycle through the different modes between the animations weapons particles colliders and sounds and you will see that most bosses are quite uh, straightforward in how they work but it's of course very time consuming to actually design all, all of the stuff and and the JSON for all the bosses are quite yeah quite tedious to go through so uh, these are maybe the most complex uh, JSON file actually all right so I kind of told you everything that we could tell you about this game editor. I have uh, maybe a couple more things, but uh, I'm going just to check on the questions to see if you are still <laughs> not melting. And uh, okay, so you could add a visualization. Uh, ah, yeah, yes, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, you specified special key for precise action. AGKAL for placing to the value of It was made for specific keyboard, AZ or Quality or both. Uh, it will work with both. So if I tell you W, it's going to be W on any kind of keyboard. So uh, it's it's not like swapped. So uh, W is W, AGKL -A -A is AGKL. There is no difference. Brain melt, but it's magic. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. So uh, it's a very long stream, I guess. Yeah, I've been streaming for two and a half hours, uh, and uh, it's very, very dense. So uh, like, it's basically the big crash course. So yeah, it's, it's typically I, I am going to try to um, when I'm going to put online this video, I am going to try to put chapters, uh, so you can like retrieve each uh, information and try to uh, like dissect and every kind of stuff but uh, of course I can't be very very detailed uh, about all of this stuff um, for instance the boss editor if I wanted to really explain you how it works give you examples give you tricks and so on it would take hours on its own so uh, best way is to try to experience and Last but not least, uh, the game settings.ini. The game settings.ini is a file that allows you to change all the hardcoded values of the skills and the altars and a few other stuff. So, for instance, you have upgrade values. Upgrade values are everything that is bound to the blessings so uh double edge is i guess it's it's called double edge but uh all of these are like code names and uh for instance um what is quite obvious the art skin bonus so for instance the art skin is like the altar which gives you 33 percent more max hp when you pick it up and you can you can change that you can for instance put I don't know 50% or maybe 200% and you're going to double your max HP right away 
um, and you can fiddle with this you can like change all the values from the blessings you can change all the values from the skill for instance the starting package you can make it maybe 5000 blood instead of 500 and making your starting combo to 3 um, you can I don't know change a lot of stuff there is maybe even values that are not used anymore into the game the oak skin you can make it to have like three more max hp when you have it and resilient you can make it even more um etc etc you can change all the values you can change also um the values of the items like items that increase your sword damage you can change how much damage it deals uh, for instance this is a default 5% but you can make them 10% if you like to and the upgraded version of the item will automatically have the double of that you can change all of these um, you can change the max HP uh, but watch out I don't think that you can go behind 99 I don't think um, you can change the item values such as the drop rate like what is the chance of having a rare item of or, or rare web or rare weapons or maybe a health object you can enhance drop rates or reduce them you can change the possibility to have mods to have what are the odds within secret rooms um, what can you change more uh, you can change what are the chance to have uh, weapon modes on bosses to have to drop weapon modes what are the damage from weapon modes how much time does weapon modes um, are activated um, some gameplay stuff you can change the difficulty you can change the uh, probability of getting challenge rooms you can change the probability of having alternative shops you can change all the value of the post game of uh, the, uh, the chaos roots you can make the chaos roots even more dangerous or maybe uh, changing drastically all the values that are there you can change the price of all the objects of all the weapons in the shops uh, you can change all the drop rates you can tell how what are the drop rates of each object that are existing into the game uh, and basically all of this stuff and all the drop rates of weapons can be changed per level you can for instance make some weapons being more likely to be dropped into specific world and so on and the only trick that there is with modifying these values is that once you've modified this file the values are going to be taken into account in the game but they are not going to be the right one to be displayed so for instance there is still going to be the old values displayed even though the game itself actually uses the right values but you can change that to change that you have to save again the localization so uh, once you have edited this file and changed some values if you want everything to be cleaned and displayed properly you save it you restart the editor and you click on save localizations so what this does is that it's going to take all of these values and inject them into the game translations and replacing directly the good strings and the good uh, lines with the proper good values so uh, this is one of uh, of what's go what you have to do and speaking of localizations if you go into localization you're going to have a file which is called localization kit and it's, and it's an excel file and if you open it you're going to see that it's actually all of the text of the game 
So you can go into, for instance, the settings tab and you have like all the value for all the texts that are displayed in all the language for the game. Um, you can change it. You can like whatever you, you like, you can change. Um, the only trick that there is, is that you can't add language that are not already there. So for instance, if you want to add an, a language that is not supported, you can't. Uh, but what you can do is actually replace a language that is already there. So for instance, let's say that you want to uh, translate, I don't know, uh, the game into Icelandic. Icelandic is not supported by the game. But what you can do is, for instance, grab, I don't know, maybe English and replace all the English values by Icelandic. And once, once you've done doing so, you close the game, close, close the, the file, restart the editor and click on save localizations. And what this is going to do, this is going to replace all of the other files, these ones. So this, these are the actual localization files that are read by the game and they are going to be compiled using all your values and put into the game. So that's basically how it's going to work. And that's pretty much it. So uh, this is all that is possible to be doing with uh, the editor. So uh, you can make all of this stuff and uh, yeah. Lot of stuff, lot to explore and hopefully lots of ideas might emerge out of this and phew yeah that was yeah pretty long pretty long and if you have any question feel free to uh, ask them in the chat i'm going to try if you, if you can do something like a small q a and uh anyway if you have any more questions uh please feel free to drop by our discord and uh, interact with either the community or ping us if the community doesn't necessarily have the answer for them and uh, we are always around we are always on the discord even if we make feel like we are not uh, always every day super active we are always are connected on discord we are always there so uh, feel free to ping and yeah that's it that's the uh, two hour and a half uh, crash course into using the Scourgebring uh, editor. So uh, I hope that it's going to be interesting to you and we can't wait to uh, see what's going to happen out of this. And uh, we are going to also share different kind of tools and stuff that can help you get around. And uh, there are going to be also a small um, text introduction to uh, all of this just to get you started. And that's pretty much it. So yeah, thank you for dropping by and uh, feel free to interact. Bye bye.